from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Number one, riding out the worst storms on record and more coming. Two, silent heroes, can you believe it, honored for helping the Jews survive the Holocaust in Germany. And Ahmadinejad plans a second Holocaust. We'll be discussing all of this and much, much more today on the program. But before we get into all of the global headlines, I would like to say that Jack always lightens our spirit a little bit with uh, humor up front. We get letters on that all the time that they like uh, the, what he has to say. And let me just say this, Jack, that uh, you get uh, jokes in the mail too, don't oh, you? Oh, all the time. Somebody just sent me a huge religious joke book. All right. <laughs> but I really like this story. Story. This minister went to the hospital because he heard that one of his parishioners was dying. He got there and he looked at the man. He wasn't too bad, but a little peaked. And he said, Sir, how is everything? <laughs> he said, Can't you answer? <laughs> Paper, pencil. So he gave it to him and he wrote a message. And the fellow passed away. And so he just put the message in his pocket and forgot about it. He's preaching the funeral. He says, our dear brother has gone to be with the Lord. And he wasn't able to speak to me, but you know, he wrote a note to all of you uh, that I'd like to share with you. And remember, the minister hadn't read it yet. It says, dear preacher, please quit standing on my air hose. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know why I'm using that? Because our pastors are standing on the air hoses across America in their churches and not preaching what they need to preach. You've been hearing me say it. 57% of the evangelicals, and this is in the Wall Street Journal, believe that there are many other ways to heaven now. They don't need Jesus. That is blasphemy, and that's because too many of you preachers have been pussyfooting, compromising, and standing on the air hose of eternal life. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, Mark 16, 15. And what is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Paul said, I declare unto you the gospel, what is it, verses 3 and 4, that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I have 400 verses like that. Jesus is the only way, and 700, that is his precious blood that saves. Quit standing on the air hose, preacher, and give your people the truth, and let them know that Jesus is coming soon as well, for every sign is here, and the Lord's about to come. Oh, Jack, it's so good to hear the Bible in a day and age like this, and all the ministers out there should really take heed to uplift their people and give them hope and comfort in a day and age in which we're living. We are going to be dealing with global headlines right now, friends, and first of all, we'd like to focus on the storms. Storms, storms out of the Atlantic have been the worst in history, the most costly, and you know, friends, very little relief ahead. Take a look at this first headline, riding out worst storms on record, a deluge of modern hurricanes in the Atlantic, and there's just no relief in sight. Once again, U.S. plans $7.6 billion super storm tracker. They say we need satellites that would improve our warning systems. Again, Pentagon envisions spaceship troopers. Oh, never heard of that. We'll talk about it. Sierra uh, courts operating in Britain. And we will talk. Oh, I can't believe that. Two different governments there. Terror trial. And that has to do with the NHS doctor's planned terrorist spectacular. And the root of evil. We will all know that Hitler will never uh, be a stranger on that level. He was an evil person. But something good came out of Germany, and I never knew it. Germany's silent heroes honored because thousands helped the Jews survive the Holocaust. I had never heard of that, had you friends, how that there were many there in Germany that helped the Jews survive, the German people. Let's back up just a little bit. Riding out the worst storms. I never realized that we could have such devastation, horrible things happening because of storms, Jack. Now, is that in the Bible? And it ties in with the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> 
let's get a time frame here. In Luke 21, 24, it says, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Modern English, Jerusalem will always be controlled by Gentile powers, but when it's controlled by my people, the Jews, that's when I'm about to return. But in connection with that, he says in verse 25, that the sea and the waves will be roaring, tsunamis, hurricanes, and all the rest. And ladies and gentlemen, it's here. And what about it? Does this happen before Christ returns? Yes, that's verse 25. And verse 27 says, when this is happening, then shall the Son of Man appear in the clouds of glory. Amen. Jack, I never realized that we could have something so impressive out there as far as our troops are concerned. Pentagon envisioned spaceship troopers. What would be the advantage of having troops in space there, Jack? I'll tell you, we're living in tremendous times. Knowledge is being increased. One of the great signs in Daniel 12, verse 4. And this, which they're going to develop soon, will be a rocket. It will hold 13 military men. It will go up vertically. It will travel thousands of miles per hour so they can be at any destination of the world in two hours flat. And it will be above the air space of the nations so that they can fly anywhere at any time, land, and then go back. And that's what the Bible says. Jesus said in Luke 21, 11, fearful and great signs shall there be from heaven. In Revelation 12, 7, it says, there was war in the heavens. And Jesus again said in Luke 21, 26, men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things which have come to pass on the earth. Why? Because the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. It's here. Mm. Something that I never imagined would happen, friends, has happened in uh, Great Britain. They have five Sharia courts set up right now. And there have been many lawyers who have issued warnings about the dangers of dual legal systems. In one country, can you really have a dual legal system? Jack, what, what do you think about this and what's the danger? A lot of the people in England are upset because the Archbishop of Canterbury is promoting Sharia law along with the law of England and they don't mix. They're entirely different. And Amos 3 verse 3 says, can two walk together unless they be agreed? Let's think about Sharia law for a minute. If a family's daughter has sex before marriage, she's often killed by her brother or father. Now, you can't have that happening in England. Uh, they believe in capital punishment by beheading, and that's what's going to happen during the tribulation hour, Revelation 20, verse 4. But England doesn't stand for capital punishment. And then if they are suicide bombers, they get 72 virgins for all eternity, a time of lust. And the Word of God certainly is against that. You know, Jack, I am so happy that something happened in Germany. Uh, there was a special honor given to the Germans who stood up against Hitler. They loved the Jew. They tried to help the Jew during the Holocaust time. And uh, I never even knew that there were that many Germans who were really trying to protect the Jews there, Jack. They were the true Lutheran Christians. And you know, Adolf Schickelgruber Hitler was a maniac. He was involved with the occult, though he claimed to be a Christian. And lo and behold, he murdered six million Jews. And the man who's like him today is Ahmadinejad of Iran, who says, my Messiah Mahdi is coming, but before he arrives, I have a duty to get rid of Israel, blot them off the face of the map. And that's why he's so vehement in what he's saying today about Israel. Now, God loves Israel. His name is Yahweh God. And in Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 and 8, he says, I did not love you because you were the most of all people, for you were the fewest, but I chose you because I loved you. Not only that, but Zechariah 2.8, God says, Israel is the apple of mine eye. In Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, and 65, verses 9 and 22, he says, Israel is mine elect, mine elect. We are the elect in the church, 1 Peter 1, 2, and the bride of Jesus, but Israel is elect of God, and not only that, but Israel is Yahweh's wife, Jeremiah 3, 14.
Mm, Jack, he always gives us the Bible perspective for everything, doesn't he? We're going to continue with our global headlines in just a moment. But first, let me just say we've got a brand new, wonderful offer for you of the week. It is the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. Take a look. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanapie Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanapie Ministries. Dr. Vanapie has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanapie Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanapie used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Can you imagine that we're not that far from giving gifts? It's almost Christmas season. I want to get my gifts ahead of time. How about you? There's a beautiful box that we put this in. So many things are in here uh, since we have the new revised edition. And uh, I don't have to hold up several books uh, by my side. They're all in here. Verse by verse, the book of Daniel and how Jack memorized the Bible is in here. Jack so very, very much is in this Bible. And Rexella, the three Three books originally sold for $60, and you get the whole package for $60, which is a $120 value for $59, and you get 10,385 coded verses. What a book! Yes, what about, maybe somebody has a birthday coming up. You want to order it for that. So there's the 800 number, there's the address. You could give this for any wonderful occasion to a good friend, loved one, or neighbor. Oh, do order it right away. And now, friends, let me just say that America has condemned attacks that are happening to Christians in Iraq. And because of the mass exodus there in Iraq, because of their persecution, America is standing up and saying, no more, we can't have this. Christians flee Iraq and the second largest city there. And I want you to take a look at what I'm reading right here. Christians flee Iraq, second city, as attacks increase. The United States is condemning this again. Suicide attacks, a growing threat in Pakistan. This is Muslim against Muslim. Muslim against Muslim, Jack. We'll talk about that. Once again, I cannot imagine this female suicide bomber surge in Iraq. There's a mother holding a baby. Some of them are giving their lives for their cause. And again, 20 dead as bombers strike at Shiite mosques in Iraq. And Iraqi tribes caught between rival Shiite parties. There you have it again, Jack. Yeah, but that's a Shiite against a Shiite. A Shiite Same against... Same denomination. Absolutely. And Saudis, Saudis indict 991 on terror charges. It's growing over there. Let's go to Egypt. Egypt seeks way to end Fatah Hamas rift. They're trying to make the peace between the two. And then, of course, Palestinians bracing for possible Hamas takeover. And take a look at this. Suicide bombers parade through the streets of Gaza. They are not afraid. They're going to show who they are. And Hamas Fatah tensions rising. Let's back up just a little bit, friends. And it is so very, very sad to know that Christians, did you know, are being killed around the world, not just in Iraq, although it is very, very high there right now. But Jack, you know, they're killing each other also, mm. not just Christians. The Hindus have just murdered a thousand Christians in India, and this group has already slaughtered many Christians that are fleeing. A thousand have just fled Iraq for safer ground. But the Bible says that when one is truly belonging to the Lord, he'll be hated. Jesus said in John 15, verses 18 to 20, If the world hate you, remember it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world 
hate you. And Jesus said in John 16, to the time will come that whosoever kills you will think he's doing God's service. And believe me, that's going on in all these various religious groups today. But you know, Christianity is so different. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself in Matthew 5, 44 and 6, 27 and 6, 35. And Jesus said in Luke 6, 27, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. Wow, how different. But what bothers me is that these Muslims are all killing one another. These suicide bombings are against their own people. And even Shiite against Shiite. And Fatah and Hamas, both Islamic groups, killing one another in the Holy Land. Something is wrong. Something is drastically wrong. Now, I'm going to give you the Christian Bible on this. And I'm sure there's some verses like this in the Quran, but they're being overlooked. And listen, this is not only for Muslims, it's for Christians, because some of you are filled with bitterness toward others who call themselves brothers and sisters in Christ. 1 John 2, verses 9 to 11. He that saith he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even until now. But he that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. First John 3.10, In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. How can you tell who's who? Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. 1 John 3, 14 and 15. We know we have passed from death unto life because we love our brothers and sisters in Christ. But whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. 1 John 4, verses 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. Now get it. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Let me repeat it. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. 1 John 4, 12. If we love one another, God dwells in us. 1 John 4, 20. If we say, I love God, we hate our brothers. We're liars. Ouch. The Holy Spirit said that. He wrote it. I only quote it. But, oh, get this, every one of you Christians. 1 John 3, 16, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because God laid down His life for us. Now watch it. And we ought to lay down our lives for other brothers and sisters in Christ. Whew. That'd bring revival in this country. Whoa, that's good for all of us, isn't it? I was just thinking, uh -huh. it's not so hard to look at somebody you've had an argument with and settle it. Say, I'm sorry. Even if you don't think you're in the wrong, say, I'm sorry. I love you. Oh, good. It's just very good. We're going to be dealing now with another global headline, which is very, very serious. It has to do with nuclear deterrent systems now. Take a look where I'm coming from, Russia, to upgrade nuclear systems. They say we can have something that will guarantee a deterrent to anything coming from space. And the new space race. China is catching up to the United States and Russia, and its neighbors in the region are competing as well. And the U.S. plans new space weapons against China. Here's a report. Israel believes Syria renewing its nuclear activity. And the new, take a look, Israeli Air Force system will pinpoint Iranian missile targets in Israel. And Iranian general says Israel has an army of, whoa, glass. It can be broken. Top Iran officials recommend preemptive strike against Israel. And again, from Iran, Israel incapable of launching wide-scale war. They're boasting there. And Russia bolsters ties with Iran. They're getting closer and closer. And the Iranian president, Ahmadinejad, says Zionist regime will collapse. Can you believe the arrogance of that man? Well, Jack has often said that Russia, Iran, and China would all join together with other Muslim countries against Israel. But Russia would be the leader to lead them down against Israel. Is that correct, Jack? That's right, Rexella. Fifty years ago, for the first time, I preached the sermon, The Coming War with Russia, According to the Bible, and I've never had to change a word right up to this present hour. Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2, The word of the Lord 
it came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Now, this is the war, verses 8 and 16, of the latter years and the latter days, not something that has already happened. Who are they? Gog is the end-time ruler of Russia, and it could be Putin or Medvedev. Next, we see the name Magog. The Scythians populated Russia, and the Greeks called them Magog or Magogites. Meshach, the original name, was that which became um, Masach, Muscovy, Muscati, and Moscow. And then you see Tubal, that's southwest of Siberia on your map, and that's where Gary Powers, the U-2 pilot, was shot down many years ago. Then you'll see the word chief prince. Now, my name is Jack, but a Jack also holds up a car while changing a tire. They put the meaning of Rosh there, a chief, but they should have kept it a name, Rosh, for that's the name of Russia today in the Israeli papers, and Russia in Greek, and Russia in English, no doubt about it. They come from the north against Israel, Ezekiel 38, verses 15 and 16, and chapter 39, verse 2. If you drew a line from Israel to the North Pole, you'd go straight through Moscow. There's no doubt about this. Now, who's going to be united with them? In Daniel 1140, the king of the south, Egypt. Isaiah 17, 1, Syria. Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, Persia, which is today Iran and Iraq. Then you have Cush and Put in the Hebrew, and that's Ethiopia, Libya, Libya Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Sudan, and other African Muslim nations. When you get to Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7, you have Jordan, Amen, Gebel, and the Palestinians. It's all there, ladies and gentlemen. But why the extermination of Israel? Say, this is the last sign before Jesus comes. That's why we know it's so near. Psalm 83, 4, let us cast Israel off from being a nation that their name be no more in remembrance. So in Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39, when Rosh and her allies come down, it's Israel that's invaded, and it's mentioned 18 times. Chapter 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. Chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice in 7, uh, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, and 29. But I'll tell you, they're not going to win because Isaiah 56, 6 is God speaking. He says, and I will give them an eternal name here on earth. You're going to lose. I'm Adina Jad and Putin and whoever you are that comes against God's people at that time in history. Oh, and it's going to be atomic. I said I'd try to quote all the verses this week, but again, I'm running out of time. But you find it in 9, uh, Psalm 97, 3, a fire goes before them, Isaiah 66, 15. The Lord comes with fire. Ezekiel 20, 47, the flaming flame shall not be quenched. In Joel 2, verse 3, Russia is coming against Israel, and the fire devours before them. They're pushed back to Siberia in verse 20, and the prophecies blood, fire, pillars of smoke, the exact effects of a nuclear blast. In verse 30, Zephaniah 1, 18, the whole land shall be devoured by fire. Malachi 4, 1, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Revelation 8, 7, a third part of the trees was burned. Revelation 9, 18, by these three was the third part of men killed by their fire, smoke, and brimstone. Hey, I made it. I got the verses in this time, and I normally don't. What does it mean? It means it's closing time. This happens after the rapture, after we're gone, in the middle of the tribulation. We will have been evacuated for 42 months when it all occurs. And that's the good news if you know Jesus as your personal Savior. And that is a very big word, if if you know Jesus. You know, friends, I was a member of a church a long, long time before I knew him. I knew all about him, but I didn't know him. Do you really know him as your Savior? Jack, show us how we can know him. John 1, verse 12. But as many as received Christ, receiving him, to them gave God the Father power to become sons and daughters. Born again, when you were born the first time, it was a birth to parents. When you're born again, it happens when you receive Jesus because immediately when you do, you become a son or daughter. You want it to happen? Look at me. Oh, Heavenly Father, you sent your son to die for sinners. And every sin can be blotted out 
and forgiven. And I come today as a sinner, Jesus, and I cast all my past on you because your precious blood is powerful to wash it all away. So today, I receive you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my Savior. Amen. Amen. How wonderful to have Jesus as your Savior. If you prayed that prayer with Jack, I was praying for you. If you prayed that prayer, write to me. There's my address. I'll send you absolutely free this little book of first steps in a new direction. Write to me. And now, friends, I want to point out the wonderful offer of the week, the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. What a great, great title for this wonderful new edition. It's a revised edition. In here is the verse-by-verse book of Daniel. He explains it all. He explains how he memorized the New Testament. There's a whole section on that. And there's just so very, very much more in here. You don't want to miss it. It's a great gift for any time of the year. If it's a birthday, for Christmas. Yes, Christmas is coming up very soon, Jack. It's a great gift. 10,385 verses quoted so you can know when each one is going to happen. And I'll tell you, folks, the three books that are now in this Bible originally sold for $60. So for that $59 price, you get all those books plus God's Word with all of those quoted verses. And you know what? Absolutely wonderfully bound in leather. You want to give it as a beautiful gift. We'll send a beautiful gift box with it. So don't put it off. You may want to give this for something other than Christmas. You want to give it for a birthday gift or whatever. But, oh, Jack spent so much time doing this, especially for you. It is the revised edition. So don't put off making the call or the address. Here's our announcer to tell you exactly how you can get it. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Ella, my friend, to order your Prophecy Bible called toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jack Vanapy Prophecy Bible, a great gift to give, a marvelous gift to receive. Order yours today. Rexella? Thank you so much, Chuck. And I do want to say there's the 800 number. There's the address. Don't put off getting this into your home. Maybe you want to keep it. But also beautiful gift. So make the call right today. And I do want to say, you know, Jack shows us in here how he memorized the Bible. I get letters all the time saying, how did he do it? It's in here for you. Verse by verse, the book of Daniel and Revelation wonderfully bound in a beautiful leather binding. All right, friends, I want to just leave you with a good thought. All this talk about enemies and hating each other, revenge gets you even with your enemy. Forgiveness puts you above him. Look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. Bye-bye.